Explain construction and working of gas chromatography. A separation brought about an exchange between a mobile gas phase and a liquid or solid stationary phase is known as gas chromatography. They are of two types, gas liquid chromatography and gas solid chromatography. So let's discuss the main components of gas chromatography instrument. So first is carrier gas or the mobile phase. The mobile phase is a gas which is selected for its chemical inertness. Helium, nitrogen, argon and hydrogen are the most commonly used gases. Hydrogen, unless unavoidable, is not used as it is explosive. The gas used as the mobile phase is called carrier gas. Next comes flow regulators. The flow of carrier gas is controlled by flow regulators. Then comes sample injection system. A small quantity of sample, approximately 0.2 microliter, is inserted in the column through a rubber septum. This is known as sample injection system. Then comes column. The column is generally made up of glass or stainless steel. Depending upon the chemical reactivity of the substances to be separated, columns are from 1 to 20 meters long and they are usually coiled. The internal diameter of the column is generally about 4 millimeter. The column is packed with an inert support material such as sea light. Alumina and microglass beads have also been used. And then comes thermostat. Sample injection system, column and detectors must be kept at higher temperature. The column is operated at a known constant temperature which may vary from room temperature to 623 Kelvin. And this depends upon the volatility of the liquid phase. And finally, there are detectors. The carrier gas emerging from the column passes into the detector, which gives an electrical signal. The signal response is proportional to the concentration of the substance present in the carrier gas. So these are the components of the gas chromatography. So let's discuss how it works. Consider a mixture containing three components, A, B and C. It is to be separated by gas liquid chromatography or GLC. A very small quantity. 0.2 microliter is injected into the front end of the column through a rubber septum by means of a syringe. The heating unit or the oven vaporizes the liquid and the vapor mixes with the carrier gas and the mixture sweeps through the column at the definite rate. Each component of the mixture in its passage through the column is retarded by the stationary liquid phase. The degree of retardation of a component depends upon the partition coefficient of that component in the liquid phase. That is, the tendency of the component to dissolve in the liquid. Component A dissolves to the maximum extent while component C dissolves to least extent. Component C emerges first along with the carrier gas followed by B and A. The signal given by the detector are recorded. The development of the chromatogram can be obtained from grapher. As the pure carrier gas flows through the column and passes into the detector, a straight line is drawn by a pen recorder on the chart. This is the baseline or the zero line. At the moment M, the sample is injected into the column. Peak C corresponds to the emergence of C, the most volatile or the least retained component of the mixture. When this component has passed, the properties of the gas mixture flowing out correspond approximately to those of the carrier gas and the curve drops to the baseline. In the same manner, B and A emerge one after another and peaks B and A are recorded. The distance from point M to L is the time during which the component C passes through the column. The rate of gas flow through the column being constant, a certain volume of gas would have passed through the column in this time. This time is known as retention time and the volume of gas passed is known as retention volume. So if you like this video, please click on the like button and also subscribe to my channel.